as you can kind of see, NIM is a really beautiful language. You can do a lot, it's very, very powerful really simple language to learn. So again, I don't think I've showed arrays yet. So if I wanted to, I could do an array very quickly. So I'm just going to create a very uh, quick array. We're going to call this R. Uh, it's probably a really bad name um, because I'm never going to remember how many R's are in there. So again, we've seen for loops already. So if I want to create an array, so let's say I have an array of numbers. So in this case, three, four, five, and then I'm just going to echo out the value. So we'll just say echo A. And then all I need to do is call however many R's that was. Um, and then, so if I just compile and run my function again, you can see three, four, five. So, you know, I've got this, uh, uh, you know, array of three, four, five. If, of course, if I wanted to, I could go const R equals uh, three, four, five, put that in here, put R there, uh, and then run this again. And you see it's going to work the same there. So our, you know, arrays are sort of just standard length arrays as you would be used to. And then, you know, that's fine. But it's going to be fit. It's a fixed length array. So it's going to be fixed to whatever value you set that to be. That sort of leads us into this idea of sequences where so if you need an array that is essentially uh, not limited, doesn't have a fixed length, that's what a sequence is. So now if I wanted to turn this array into a sequence so it's not a fixed length, all I would really need to do is uh, change this R to being of a type sequence of integer. Again, I'm gonna get the red squigglies on here, type mismatch, because it's expecting a sequence. So I will change this from a const to a var. I'll get rid of this. So all I'm gonna do is then manually add in three, four, and five to the list. And now if I just clear my console, run that one more time, you can see it's gonna come back with three, four, five. So the main difference between an array and a sequence is an array's fixed length, whereas a sequence is unbounded. So if I wanted to, for example, implement something like a stack, then you can kind of see I could create a uh, new type, and we'll talk about that in a second, which is of type sequence T, and then I could implement a stack by just going stack add, you know, and I could do my procedure prop, I could do it in his empty clear, etc., and then I could just pop some items there for an exact uh, for an example. So if I just run this for one second, you can see I've got a stack of one, two, three, four, five. It's popped item five, four, three, two, one, and the stacks went down from being a fixed length of five. It's gone four, three, two, one. So how that essentially works is I couldn't do a fixed length array in this sense. I have to use a sequence because the the length of the stack is changing all of the time. Um, and then all I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna push items onto the stack using that same uh, add item that you saw earlier. And then I can sort of pop items off the stack, uh, you know, as I go through, if, if the stack's empty, it's just gonna say, check if the stack length is zero. To clear it, it's just gonna resize the length of the, uh, the sequence to zero. And then all you're gonna do in this case is to set up your initial stack. You're going from uh, I one to five. So I'm just gonna push item one, two, three, four, five onto the stack, echoes out the stack. And then there's the while loop where we're going around a loop while it's not empty. And I'm just popping items off the stack. And then I'm showing what the popped item is and what the stack is. So again, really, really simple. Last thing that I'm sort of pointing out here is you see this type, type stack T is equal to sequence T. Two things going on here. Again, it's using generics. So T in this sense is before I was specifying that it needed to be an int, but uh, when I put T here, it's a generic. Yeah, so the type is unknown. So when uh, I actually perform my code in the first place, so when I'm doing my, uh, my variable deprecation, declaration here, you see stack is int, that is the point where I'm specifying the type. So that is essentially what generic is. Here, I don't know what the type is. So this push and pop and empty and clear could work with ints, it could work with unsigned ints, it could work with strings, it doesn't matter, right? Because the, the type it doesn't care about. But when I initialize my stack, then I define what that type is and all of those operations will work. So I can have stacks that work with different uh, types there. So that's kind of generics. And then of course I'm using this type sequence to essentially rename, you know, I'm setting a custom type here um, for, um, you know, of saying actually a stack is a sequence. I could have just called this a sequence of type T, 
but you know stack is a little bit more named. It's a better you know so by being able to use the type command, I can give it um, a, a better name and something that's more descriptive. Now of course that is useful for object oriented programming and things like you know creating custom structures, which is cool. I'm not going to go into that. I don't think name is really good. At, um, you know, object-oriented programming. So we're going to skip that. It's really a systems language. But of course, if I wanted to uh, do type things, for example, you know, and create structs, type things, then I could use a type there. And in fact, again, I'm not going to do that demo here. But if I go to Nimlang, for example, if you look at the example here, you can see type person is equal to object name string age natural. You know, so I'm creating the uh, our person object. And then I can go let people equals, and then here's an array person object person open. So it's an array of people in that sense. And then I can loop through for person and people there. So again, you can kind of you can get the idea. I'm not going to run that example because you know I've just explained it. 